Hey there, everyone. Patrick Ferguson from Skull Splitter Dice reporting from my office today as opposed to my D&D room slash studio, which is undergoing a few changes right now. But today we're going to be talking about fighting with a weapon in both hands, a time-honored tradition in D&D. And while some other systems and older editions may have made this a bit complicated to pull off, thankfully 5th edition smooths out just about everything, and we're going to go over all of that in today's episode. Before getting fancy or adding a bunch of class abilities, let's go through exactly how two weapon fighting works in 5th edition. With no bells and whistles, when you make an attack action, you make a single attack roll with a weapon that you're holding. So now let's take a look at the rules for two weapon fighting. When you take the attack action and the attack with a light melee weapon that you're holding in one hand, you can use a bonus action to attack with a different light melee weapon that you're holding in the other hand. You don't add your ability modifier to the damage of the bonus attack, unless the modifier is negative. If either weapon has the thrown property, you can throw the weapon instead of making a melee attack with it. Let's go over this slowly and make sure that you don't miss the key pieces of what's going on here. It's important to note that this isn't a feat or something exclusive to a specific class. Everybody can do this if they really want to. The big limitation for two weapon fighting is that both your weapons need to have a light quality. Light is a weapon quality given to smaller weapons, which usually do less damage than their big cousins. The extra attack you get to make with your extra weapon uses up your bonus action. This is important to keep in mind, since this means even when you gain the extra attack ability and similar abilities, you still only ever get the one bonus action. Always keep in mind that offhand attacks don't add the modifier. This means that out of your one-two punch, the second hit is going to be quite weaker. Your first attack is totally normal, the one you got from the actual attack action, but your second attack, the one from the bonus action, doesn't get to add your strength or dexterity modifier to the final damage. As long as your thrown weapons are light, you can toss an extra one through two weapon fighting as a bonus action. Now you might be asking yourself, why doesn't everybody just do this? It seems like a superior approach to combat. Well, two weapon fighting is amazingly easy to do in 5e, but doing so means choosing an extra attack above some other, perhaps better, options. Generally, attacking with two light weapons has about-ish the slightly higher damage output than smacking with one heavy weapon, and because it's between two attacks, you have better odds of hitting at least once. But once you get to level 5 or so and gain an extra attack, two swings with something big hits a lot harder than three stabs with something small. I'm obviously generalizing a little bit here, but the strategy with two-weapon combat is more weaker attacks instead of fewer, stronger attacks. Any of you guys out there that have played a Soulsborne game, I'm sure I don't have to lecture you about this part of the strategy. Unfortunately, holding two weapons means that you cannot hold a shield. Put a weapon in that offhand, or a shield, it's a choice between offense and defense. Plus two AC is a major buff that you shouldn't pass up without consideration. Your class may not have a shield proficiency to begin with, so this may not really be that big of a deal to you, but still, to others, it can be. And also, bonus actions matter. For some classes, your bonus action is a vital resource that you can't reliably use for that extra swing. A surprisingly large number of abilities use your bonus actions, Barbarian Rage, Flurry of Blows, and countless archetype abilities that need your bonus action. So just keep this in mind when you're figuring out your build. So what weapons should I choose for two-weapon fighting? Well, two-weapon fighting requires two qualities, light and one-handed. So unless you've got access to homebrew exotic weapons or odd magic items, your options are basically going to be clubs, daggers, hand axes, light hammers, sickles, scimitars, and short swords. To start off with a bit of a dud, uh, I wish there was a reason to use clubs outside of role-playing or flavor, but there's really not. Don't use clubs, kids. Stay in school and don't use clubs. Say no to clubs. Daggers, however, get a lot of use, mainly because they're the only weapon that has finesse, light, and the thrown weapon properties. This lets you get away with some pretty cool stuff like stabbing a dagger in for a melee attack for your first attack, and then throwing the dagger away for your second attack as a throwing one. The damage is very low, but they're the best finesse option out of the simple weapon category. If you're planning on using a dual-wielding dexterity-based character, these are probably your best option if you don't have a martial weapon proficiency. Hand axes get a step up in their damage die over daggers, a d6 as opposed to a d4. They're simple weapons that can still be thrown, but you lose the finesse quality. Hand axes are the best option if you're using a dual wielding for strength-based characters who may not have access to martial weapons. Light hammers are the only thrown bludgeoning weapon, which 
is odd, but there's still no reason to use them over hand axes, if you ask me. They're better in just about every respect, unless you're dealing with some strange damage type resistances where you need bludgeoning for some reason. Ah, uh, sickles. While I love them stylistically, they're outmatched by practically every other weapon in the game, so unless there's, you know, some sort of character-based reason, don't use sickles. Might get some heat for this, but I'm going to lump together scimitars and short swords, if not only because they're identical in all but a couple ways, which I'll get to in a second, but they're also your best options, as they're definitely the big winners when it comes to dual wielding. Both have the light and finesse qualities, and each one does 1d6 of damage, which is the best option you'll get from a light weapon. The only differences between them, other than their aesthetics, is that scimitars deal slashing damage and short swords deal piercing damage. Also, the scimitar is slightly more expensive, which if you've ever seen one, you could probably assume why. But if you have the weapon proficiencies, both the scimitar and short sword are martial weapons, these are your best options for straight damage dealing as a dual wielder. Pick one of these unless you want to play around with throwing weapons, in which case you should definitely just go back to the market and pick up some daggers and hand axes before you head out. Thankfully, in 5e you don't need any feats to make two-weapon fighting viable, though they did provide a feat that helps those builds along called Dual Wielder. It's a solid feat and you should consider taking it if you plan on doing primarily two-weapon fighting. Just keep in mind that the ability score increase you'll be giving up for it can often be better than just getting the feat itself, weirdly enough. Should you decide to choose the feat though, let's go over everything that that entails, starting with that plus one bonus to AC while you're wielding a separate melee weapon in each hand. The AC bonus goes a long way towards making up for the shield you're missing out on by putting a weapon in your offhand. It's still not as defensive as a shield, but it definitely helps. You can also use two weapon fighting even when one-handed melee weapons you're wielding aren't light. This is an important bit as all those weapons ratings that we had earlier go right out the window and now you can just grab a pair of whatever one-handed weapons you'd like. Generally, this just lets you upgrade from a D6 weapon to whatever D8 weapons you want to try, but it also unlocks some crazy builds like Double Whips or the classic Net and Trident combo. I'm a personal fan of the Double Whip build myself. Another aspect is that you can draw or stow two one-handed weapons when you would normally be able to draw or stow only one of them. This will be better or worse depending on how much of a stickler your DM is, really. Technically, you should be able to only draw a single weapon as part of your turn's movement. So if you get attacked, you should only be able to draw one of your weapons without wasting an action. This lets you get around this problem. However, most DMs I've encountered don't enforce this issue all that much, so this feature will be essentially wasted if you play in a more lenient group. As we said earlier, any class can dual wield if they want to, but there are definitely some that are built more efficiently for it than others, starting with the fighter. Super simple, all fighters get to pick a fighting style and you can simply pick two weapon fighting. This gets rid of the biggest limitation for two weapons by letting you add your ability modifier to your offhand attack. Simply pick this fighting style followed by picking your fighter archetype and you're ready to go. There's also the Ranger, who usually needs that first turn bonus action for Hunter's Mark, but after that they don't need their bonus action for really all that much, and you can use it for those extra swings. Plus, that Hunter's Mark damage applies with every hit, including your offhand attacks. All this, and Rangers even get the same fighting style ability that fighters get, albeit a, a level later. As for the Barbarian, you need your bonus action to start raging, but once you're good and angry, your bonus action is freed right up. Your bonus rage damage will apply to your offhand attacks as well, and the all-out assault feels pretty in line with the Barbarian. I particularly like the Path of the Zealot for this build, as you gain more chances to hit and deal the extra damage with the Divine Fury feature. So, is it worth it? This will vary greatly on your build, but in a vacuum, two-weapon fighting generally means trading out the possibility of greater damage on fewer attacks in favor for lesser damage spread out over multiple attacks. And while everyone can have their own strategy in terms of applying the mechanical knowledge of that to their game, I know that some people are just dead set on playing a dual-wielding character because that's the character they want to play. And frankly, if that's all the reason you have, that's enough. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe because we put out new content like this every week, and if you're creating a character that fights with two weapons that you're proud of, I would love to hear all about them down in the comments. I think my favorite one that I've ever encountered was a character that my buddy played that was a dwarf that dual wielded two hammers. I just, I don't think I've seen that before, and haven't seen it since, 
just kind of found it funny. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. My name is Patrick Ferguson from Skull Splitter Dice, and until next time, farewell. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you never miss out.